Welcome to Collaborative Statistics Chapter 1. Sampling and data. So what is statist probability in statistics? Uh, statistics is the study of data, uh, namely the collection of data, the analysis of data, the interpretation of data, and the presentation of data. And we're going to be looking at how we deal with data throughout this entire book. Um, data could be many things, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, exactly what that is as we go through this chapter. Uh, probability is the study of randomness, the chance of something occurring, um, like when you roll a dice or flip a coin or um, the whether or not you approve of the president, what kind of color car you drive, you know, the, the chance of it being red car. The, those are what probability are and those are what statistics are and we're going to look at this as a whole as we go along and we're going to look at we're going to chop it up in little pieces and we're going to study how um, these things interact and how we report them and we see them in the news all the time but they don't necessarily mean anything to us and we're going to learn how this stuff affects our lives basically so key terms um, when we have population, population is the entire thing. Now, we usually think of population of a state or the country or the world, but we could be looking at a basketball team. We could be looking at the cars at a dealership. We could be looking at the number of the students in a classroom, but it has to be the entire group. So everybody has to be there. We have to look at that entire thing. And then when we take data from that, those are called parameters. Now the other part of that is a sample. A sample is a small piece of the population. So a classroom, while it could be a population and when we look at it as a whole, a sample, it could be a sample of the school, it could be a sample of the people in the country, it could be a sample of the people in the world. I mean it's not a very good sample of the people in the world because it ha it's very limited and it's not random but we're looking at it as a small piece. If I'm looking at the cars in a parking lot, those are a sample of all the cars in the state, you know, all the cars in the country. Um, but I could take three or four cars out of that parking lot and say that is a sample of the cars in the parking lot. And when we do data on those, those are called statistic. Okay, so a statistic is a calculation of data from a sample. Now variables, variables are um, well just like in algebra where we had x and y, we come across x and y a lot, they're the things that can change. So the actual data numbers become variables in these cases. So if I ask you for your height well, your height, we may say x is what we're going to use to represent the height, and that will vary by person that we ask. So, um, next, other terms, we have data. Now, data is numbers. It's stuff that we've collected. It is uh, singular and plural. Um, you know, we'll, it's, data is really plural, singular is datum. Um, but data is what we've gathered. It's just the raw stuff. We haven't done anything to it. We haven't calculated anything. It's just the raw list of numbers. And it could be a few things. It could be lots of things. Lot, lots of numbers, depending on how much we've, we've gathered. And so data has two types. There's qualitative, which and there's quantitative. Qualitative means that it has a quality to it. It's a category. Um, color, whether it's the color of a car, color of a skin, color of your eyes, color of your hair. Um, it could be um, names, so all the A names and all the B names and all the C names. Um, however we group those things that have a quality to them, we, we can, um, they're an adjective. Whereas quantitative is numerical, it has to be numerical, it's a measure. Okay. Now, we have two types of quantities. We have discrete, which are things that we can count, and we have continuous, which are things that are measured. Um, so the difference between them is, let's say a discrete thing would be eggs. 
you know, you don't get a half of an egg, you don't get a third egg, you have an egg, or you don't have an egg. You know, there's no, oh, I gathered six and two-thirds eggs. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Whereas continuous is, um, con there's parts. So how tall are you? I'm 36 and point two one seven five inches. You know, um, how old are you? I'm 25 years, three months, four days, six hours, 10 minutes, 13.8571 seconds. So I can keep breaking that down. It's continuous value. Okay, and so that's the difference between how much do you weigh? You know, we can keep going. And the more uh, in continuous you're going to be, you can be very precise. You can add, keep going with decimal places. Okay. Um, things, other things we're looking at. Mean. Okay, mean is just a word for, we used to call it average. I remember in third grade or fourth grade when you first learned division, the first thing you learned to do was get to calculate your average grade. Um, so that's the, the ooh, we, we can do that. You know, that's what you called it average. Well, now in statistics we don't call it average anymore because um, we, there's a couple of terms we have for central tendency and mean is just one of them. So we don't want to use the word average because it has a different connotation. It means the middle and we have another we have two other terms we have mode and we have uh, median which we'll get into in a couple in the next chapter um, which also kind of can mean average based upon the data that we've collected of the popula of the sample depending talking about the population so we have to look at that and then uh, proportion as we mentioned it is part of um, uh, probability. Proportion is a percent, okay, basically, um, of something. So we are looking at 38 out of 265. We have a proportion. We have a, 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 val a fractional value, and that's what the, those terms are. Um, so data, here we have uh, qualitative data, categorizing, describing, attributes. You know, they're um, as I said, they're 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 adjectives of something, whereas quantitative are measuring or counting attributes of the population. We have discrete, countable, whole numbers. Continuous are fractional numbers. You know, you are going to have parts. We don't when we count, we go no go one one and a half, two two and a half. You know, two and three quarters, two and five eighths. We don't do that. We say one, two, three. So when we're looking at discrete values, we're going to have, um, one of the things we're going to be talking about is successes. You know, if I flip a coin 50 times, how many heads did I get? I didn't get 28 and a third heads. I got 28 <laughs> heads, or I got 29 heads. Uh, so that's, you know, discrete values. They're counted. Um, we have ways of describing, of, of not necessarily describing, but showing data. A bar graph, as you can see here. It has vertical lines that are going up and down. They're bars. Uh, we have Pareto charts, which is a bar graph, but the difference is, is that it goes from highest to lowest. So we, here we may have put these in alphabetical order, Asian, black, Filipino, it looks kind of alphabetical order. Now in the next one we have put them from largest to smallest, so you know, the highest one and it keeps going down so they're no longer necessarily in um, alphabetical order. Uh, pie chart, which we use to look at um, percentages really. We break and here we had numbers, values, you know, here we've taken those percentages and we've put them into a hole and said, okay, well, it allows us again to kind of see uh, pieces of it. Okay, so these are your normal ways of looking at data. This is the way it's going to be presented to you. Um, we take these things and do more information with it, but at least we have a way to look at it. We can see the stuff. Okay, it has meaning. We can, if I put this in a newspaper, people would, and with information about it, they could go, oh, I, I understand that. 
And so that's why we re uh, represent them in these what kinds of ways, so we can show them to people. So sampling, the most basic type of sampling, the most important type of sampling. I don't know if you've noticed it, um, it's very large. Here, simple random sampling, okay? Which means that we take a random number generator and we go through and we pick, you know, the fourth person and then the seventh person and then the third person and then the second person and then the fifth person and then the and those we, we take out a list and we call those people. That's a random sample. Okay. We might have replacement, we might not, you know. Uh like when we're doing things, it doesn't make, when we're asking people, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense to replace them because then we would ask them again and we really don't want that. Um, and when you do large enough samples, you know, it, it doesn't affect the numbers really all that much. If you have eight people, <laughs> you know, there, then the, the, the percentages, you know, you know, the possibility of being chosen, you know, obviously becomes, you know, vast when you, um, start re when you don't replace people because it goes from 1 and 8 to 1 and 7 to 1 and 6 to 1 and 5. But if you're looking at 10,000 people, you know, 1 in 10,000 versus 1 in 9,999 9, isn't a big difference, you know, in decimal ways. Um, so, but we usually don't replace people, we do replacement in sampling of people because we don't want the same person to answer the question twice. Um, when we do this, we have a sample size and we label it N. You're going to see lots of letters um, that do and don't make sense. Um, N, I guess, for number of things, um, but that's the standard, is that the sample size is of N, all right? Um, you know, it could be 36, it could be um, 25, it could be 162. I don't, you know, the sample size will vary as we go along. Um, and there are other types of sampling methods, as I showed you just a few seconds ago. Uh, stratified, cluster, systematic, and convenience. Um, when I was taking statistics, we never even mentioned any of these because you just don't really do them. Um, their uh, convenience people do because, well, it's the easiest, you know, you walk by, hey, would you like to fill out this survey? And they say yes or no, and if they say yes, you fill it out, and then when you're done, you know, if it's a five-minute survey or a ten-minute survey, you go back and the next person goes by, hey, would you like to fill out a survey? And they say yes or no. Um, so that's what a convenience survey sample is. Uh, stratified cluster, um, they break things up into groups and then take samples either randomly choose the whole group or randomly choose people from each group depending on which one you're looking at and there's a if, on YouTube there's a bunch there's one really good one um, in the class here we have I, I have videos that I stole from him uh, on using that and I th think it shows better because you know he shows how it works with paper people um, and a systematic sample is I'm going to take every third person or I'm going to take every fifth person or I'm going to take every 22nd person um, that comes along and so there's a system to your method so you can see why they become less uh, as we go down the list you know less random and sampling you really want to have random because um, we don't want to. We want to remove as much bias as we can, and um, by doing it randomly, we aren't choosing that. We don't have. Um, we're not putting that piece in. So, frequency tables. Frequency tables are just ways that we use to um, write data down, and the simplest one is the frequency. We have the things. Number of things that occurred. How many times did they occur? That's it. So we start from that. We go, okay, well, I, you know, take a tally sheet and I count them up and I go, okay, you know, two occurred three times and three occurred five times and four occurred three times and five occurred six times and six occurred twice and seven occurred once. And that's it. That that's all I see on a frequency table. Now, that's the simplest one. It's not very useful. It just gives you a list of numbers. The next one is the relative frequency. We take our frequencies and we find out what 
percent of the time, what fra a fractional number, you know, we can turn it into a fraction, a decimal percent, whichever. Uh, we take the value, the, the frequency, and divide by how many things there were. Well, there were 20 students that were asked. So the first one is 3 out of 20. The second one is 5 out of 20. And the third one is 3 out of 20, 6 out of 20, 2 out of 20, 1 out of 20. Um, you should reduce your fractions. You know, obviously, if you're a decimal, you can go to uh, decimal places. Um, if there's rounding, you can decide where you're going to stop and say, I'm going to do two number, two decimal places, because you know that's really all I need, three decimal places. You know, and you'll you'll write those things down. You'll be told how many decimal places you need to go to. Um, so if I'm going to turn it into a percent, I would just turn it into a percent. Remember, take your decimal, move it two places at the percent sign. So, but that's what a relative frequency is. So it's just, well, great. This occurred. You know, two people were asked. You know, how many hours they worked, and the value two came up three times. Oh, great. But what is? Let's be able to compare that. Well, I can see now that that's three fifteen percent of the of our, my respondents work only two hours a week. So that's what it's telling me. That's what the relative frequency is. The cumulative relative frequency takes the next step. So we take our relative frequencies and we add them up. Okay, as we're going along, they should total. They have to total one, otherwise, <laughs> when you're done, um, otherwise you made a mistake somewhere. Um, so we just take the first one, which is 0.15. Then we would as the next one. So because that's, this allows us to see below. So if I'm looking at how many people work less than four hours, four hours or less. I can look and go, oh, well, gee, three people said two, five people said th you know, three, and three people said four. So I could add those together, and I would get you know, three plus five plus three is 11. OK, well, great, 11 people. But that doesn't mean anything. I'm going to take my cumulative relative frequency, which is the percentages, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, and 0 0.15. And I'm going to add them together. And I find out that 0.55 percent or 0.55 or 55 percent of the people work four hours or less. Now, those are the tricky things you have to remember: Le or or less, you know, less, greater than, least, most, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. They're going to take these values and we're going to put them together. They have meaning, you know. So words have mathematical values. At most means, you know, less than or equal to, whereas at least means greater than or equal to. And so we would have to, if we're looking for greater than or equal to, we take our cumulative frequency and then subtract it from 1. And that will allow us to get that value. And we are at the end of chapter 1. That's it. Um, look forward to chapter 2 in the coming days. Um, I will see you in class. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask me. Uh, don't forget to take notes, um, all that good stuff. Um, we'll do some of the problems, but this is chapter one in a nutshell. Bye.